Welcome to the Daily Word verse by verse. Grab your Bibles and follow along as we study the book of Revelation. Keep in mind, <clears throat> I am using the Holman Christian Standard Bible. So if you're using a different translation, the read is different, but the message is the same. We're going to pick right up with our study. We're in chapter 1 and in verse 7. I want to read uh, verse 7. And he says, look, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him, including those who pierced him. And all of the families of the earth will mourn over him. This is certain. Now, all prophecies lead to this event. Jesus is coming back and John is saying that it is certain. Now, I said because we're not doing an exhaustive, uh, in-depth study in prophecy or eschatology, um, we have to every now and then kind of pause and give us some nuggets, especially with this subject of prophecy, uh, because not that it is hard, but it is exhaustive. And so um, the, the, these nuggets will help us kind of fill in the gaps. Now, in our last video, we went to the book of Daniel because I think Daniel gives us a good nugget so that we can understand what is going on. And briefly, remember, God judged Israel. Um, the prophecies of Isaiah, which began some 120 to 150 years before this uh, judgment came, this Babylonian exile came, warning Israel to change from their ways. And by the way, um, in, in the Old Testament, in the section what is called the writing of the prophets, you have the major and the, mi uh, major and the minor prophets. I don't agree with that terminology, but um, in the minor prophets, um, the last three books of the Bible, except for those three, they are post-exile uh, books. But all of the other pro uh, minor prophets uh, were about the same time as Isaiah. And the, re and the reason why that's important to know is because they're all prophesying the same prophetic voice that judgment is coming. Well, Jeremiah, judgment not only was coming, Jeremiah kind of shows up about 20 years before the exile, and then his, his prophecy goes all the way through and past the death of the nation. It was a brutal time. The nation was completely destroyed. The people were tortured, raped, and then they were the, uh, tens of thousands of captives were carried off to Babylon, and, and, and many of them would never even come back. And I said, what's interesting about the Babylonian exile was that not only was it a turning point for the nation of Israel, Several things happened. One, uh, they no longer were a split kingdom, but many of the Jews were uh, seeded into the kingdom of Babylon that would go on to be seeded into other world kingdoms. And so after the exile, most of the Jews never returned back to their homeland. Um, <clears throat> but also the events of the uh, Babylonian Empire was that it changed the course of human history. So for the first time, beginning with Nebuchadnezzar, what we saw was he was the beginning of the world dominating kingdoms. Now there had been mighty kingdoms before, the Egyptian kingdom, the Assyrian kingdom. Though they were powerful, they were not world dominating. Well, Babylon ruled the world. And that was, the, and this is the whole theme or the reason for Daniel's prophecy. You have to understand that Daniel's prophecy is really one big interpretation of a dream that God had given to Nebuchadnezzar. Four dominating kingdoms that would rule the earth. And what is interesting about the image that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had saw was you, got, you see these four human kingdoms, man kingdoms, that would dominate the world. And then in the end, <coughs> you see that a stone not made with hands comes up and smite this image and it pulverizes the image and it, it just, the, the dust of it just dissimulates into nothingness. And that rock that destroys this image um, is the, um, uh, it fills the earth and, be, and forever and ever. And that is the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Verse 7 in Revelation, he is coming that is certain. Now, the, the problem is, it's been 2,000 years since John has prophesied these things. A little longer, since uh, some 2,500 years since, um, 2,500 years plus, I should say, since Daniel prophesied these things. 
So we left off with Daniel 70 weeks, and I want to get into that because that's important to understand. He gives us some keys to understand that. Now understand, um, in verse 24 of chapter 9, chapter 9, <clears throat> it says 70 weeks are decreed about your people in your holy city to bring about rebellion into an end and to put a stop to sin and wipe away injustice and bring in everlasting righteousness and set up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy place. And so this prophecy, as with most prophecy, centers around God's dealings with the nation of Israel, the judgment, the restoration. And notice he says, 70 weeks are decreed upon your people. Now these 70 weeks, it's important to understand the timeline here because 70 weeks were seven year periods. So 70 seven year periods of time and that totals out to 490 years. Now why this is going to be important? Because in verse 25 he says, no one understand this from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince would be seven weeks and 62 weeks. <clears throat> now, so that's 69 weeks. Now from Daniel's perspective, this decree is coming up because he's realizing, which is the reason why this interpretation is even given to him. He begins to read Jeremiah the prophet who prophesied that the exile would be only 70 years. Daniel is reading this and go, oh, wait a minute, 70 years are almost up. So he begins to pray and to ask God for wisdom. And God sends an angel and gives them this timeline. So 70 weeks, he says, or 490 years. There's a problem with this, however, and I'm going to get to it in a moment. So he says after the, verse 26, after those 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and will have nothing for his people. The coming of the prince will destroy this will be destroyed with the sanctuary and will end, and the end will come with the flood, under the end of their reward, desolation is decreed. Now let me stop because again, sixty-nine of these weeks bring us right up to the crucifixion of Jesus. The Messiah is cut off. And so we but here's another interesting thing that we need to understand. Well, let me go on and read because I think this is important here. Verse 27, he will make a firm covenant with many for one week. Now, remember, a week is a seven-year period of time. Thus, the seven-year tribulation period. I'll get to that in a moment. He says he will make a firm covenant with, with many for one week, but in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and offerings, and the abomination of desolation will be on the wing of the temple until the decreed destruction is poured out over, this, over the desolator. It is important to understand that term, the abomination that makes de desolation. Because if you read the 24th chapter of Matthew, Jesus refers to this incident. He says, when you see the abomination that makes desolate, and he's talking to the Jewish people, he says, run. Now, remember this 70 weeks. 70 weeks are determined upon your people, your holy city, to bring the end of rebellion. So... But something happened here prophetically. We are between week 69 and week 70. And this is important. One of the most astounding things about the Bible and prophecy is that as a timeline, I can chart the prophetic progress here. For example, if I'm in Isaiah's time, Isaiah gives the prophecy, Babylon is coming. Now, I think Babylon uh, invaded the city around 588 BC. So now, if I'm Jeremiah, I'm looking at, I can look back at Isaiah and say, fulfilled prophecy. Now, um, if I'm, and this is what happened with Daniel, that Daniel was reading Jeremiah's prophecy. <laughs> and he goes, the 70 years are almost up. So now, what happens is that in a few years after Daniel, Cyrus, the 
king of the Medes and Persians, issues this decree to rebuild Jerusalem. That starts a prophetic clock. A time, these 490 years. And those 490 years, all of a sudden we come to the Messiah and he's cut off. So now the disciples, those prophets, in that day could go, oh, guess what? We're at week 69. But something happens. Where's week 70? Because week 70 is this seven year period for the man of sin, or as he's mistakenly referred to as the Antichrist, the Antichrist. The Bible doesn't label him that, although he is an Antichrist. Remember, John said an Antichrist is anyone who denies the doctrines of Christ. But the man of sin, um, uh, we're waiting for this 70 year. Why? We know it hasn't happened because he's not here. He's not going, he's not making this peace agreement that he's going to break in the middle of that year. So this 70 year timeline, okay, it's important to understand that this 70 year timeline, um, or I'm sorry, seven year timeline, it hasn't happened yet. So we're between week 69 and week 70. And that's important to understand. We have been between that week 69 and 70 for now 2,000 years. So why is that? I'll get into that in the next video. I'll see you then.